In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at what is involved in the initial setup and deployment of a PowerVault DL2000. So once the equipment is racked and you boot the DL2000, you will come to this screen, which will prompt you uh, for several pieces of information. We'll start on the left-hand side to get familiar with the screen here. We'll see under collecting information that the things we're going to be inputting are typical things you put in for any type of setup. So new default password. Uh, you'll have network configuration, which we'll look at here in a minute, uh, and we'll look at some other things. Um, so here we'll change the password. The default password will be in the user manual for the DL2000. So we'll change that here. We'll click Next. Under Network, we'll provide some network information such as which NIC or NICs that we want to use. We'll assign IP addresses to those NICs, either through DHCP or we can just assign static IP addresses. And of course we do support IPv6. Under host and domain, we're going to rename the machine to whatever makes sense for your environment. In this case we'll call this the PowerVault DL2000. And then down below here, we just provide the network credentials that we need to join this to the, to the domain. In our lab here, we've got um, a domain by the name of DL2000 already set up. So we'll pop in administrator, give it the password it needs, and we'll move on to the SNMP section. And under SNMP, we've got the uh, option to check off the box here to use a, an SNMP community. And we're not going to do that step here in the demo, but you can do that uh, Do that right there. Disk is really the most important part here. So under disk, you notice that we have the default option selected for automatic. As you'll see later in the demonstration, what that means is that once we finish with this setup, the first time we start back with exec, back with exec will create a job known as the configure storage job. And it will go out and find all the hard drives in the DL2000 and configure them so that they're ready to use for backup to disk targets. So we'll go along here. It's just joined it to the domain, so we're going to see a reboot happen. Once we reboot, we'll log back in with our domain credentials. There we go. Run out of user. Pop in the domain credentials here. Alright, so once we get logged back in, we'll see that we'll be uh, we'll continue with where we left off and we'll finish with SNMP and those type of things and then you'll see semantic is the last thing that kicks off there. So at this point, um, the appliance is going to take care of installing back the exec for you. So to this point in the demo, we've eliminated the need to uh, install Windows, to install Windows updates, no need to install drivers because we're taking care of that. Um, so we've pretty much eliminated several hours of work already, but you'll see here in a moment uh, with the auto provisioning feature that will save you a lot more time. So if you're an existing Symantec customer, at this point you can just agree to the terms of the Symantec licensing agreement, the end user agreement. Here you can input any product keys for um, any um, agents that you have that you want to use today. The one caveat there is that those do need to be version 11 or newer to use those. So if you're not 11 or newer, you need to upgrade those to 12.5 so that you can use those product keys. Uh, here you just make the selections for which features you want to turn on on the media server. Then we'll pick a few. All the typical ones here, SQL, Exchange. You notice um, down here we've got this option for virtual environments. That's new to 12.5. And the very bottom there, that last option says uh, storage provisioning option. That's the auto provisioning that I've referred to a couple times already. So let's click next. We'll give back of exec the same credentials that uh, that we gave for the hardware. And after you do set this up, you do have the option to use multiple admin accounts if you want to segment uh, the management of your backup operations. Alright, 
going to click next. It's just telling us congratulations, you authenticated the domain, and we're going to click install. Alright, so configuration complete. And we'll see here, when we click finish, we'll be presented with the DL2000 homepage. And just to get you oriented with the screen, we can launch back of exec from the link on the top left there. But in the middle section, we can see all the information we need to know about our hardware, if we recall support, there's your service tag. Uh, and then on the bottom left, you get some status indicators letting you know that everything's healthy. So here's what we're referring to with the uh, auto provisioning feature. So back of exec has started up and found eight disks in the external storage array at this point. And it's just telling you I found those disks and I'm going to configure those for you. So all you really need to do, we'll go ahead and close the auto setup wizard right back here. All we need to do is just click yes and say, um, tell back and accept we do want it to configure those disks for us. And if we take this to full screen and look at the job setup tab, we can see that back and exec has created that configure storage job. So we'll expand this out a little bit so you can see the job name. There we go. So the job's been created. And if we go now to the Job Monitor tab, we can check on the progress of that job. So there's the job. You can see it's already 97% done. You'll note that when this is finished, the time elapsed will only be about 30 seconds. Um, now, as I said, there are 8 disks in the array, which amounts to about 3 terabytes usable in this demonstration. That doesn't mean that we've formatted 3 terabytes worth of disk in 30 seconds. It just means that we've gone ahead and created uh, two volumes or virtual disk as you can see down here below array one so that you can go ahead and start creating your backup jobs. So under the covers, the disk, still, the disk are still formatting, the RAID still building out, but you're able to get on with the business of creating backup jobs because you now have two volumes of virtual disk that you can use as backup devices. <coughs> so let's take a look at the properties of the array. If I look here at this level, array one represents the physical array that's directly attached to the DL2000. This will hold as many as 15 disks. And if we click on the physical disk tab here, you'll see that at the moment we only have eight. And the way the auto provisioning has worked, it's configured a hot spare, and then taken the remaining uh, seven disks and created a RAID 5. So if we take a closer look here, on top of that seven disk RAID 5, we have two virtual disks or partitions. So if we look at the properties for these, we'll see that uh, we have some options that, that we can tweak. There we go. So on the bottom of this pop-up window here, you'll see there's a concurrent operations option. Defaults to one can be as high as 16. It means you can have as many as 16 concurrent backup jobs running to this, to this virtual disk. Uh, best practices would be to keep that number somewhere around four or five. And here on this tab, you can see you can set thresholds or alerts. So when the disks are 75% full, send me an email or give me some sort of alert. Um, so I'm, just so you can see what's been happening under the covers here, we'll look at the alerts tab. These are just all the different informational alerts to let you know here's what's been going on. Uh, you see these ones here in the middle where the disks were being configured. And now we've popped in disk number 9. And what Backup Exec is telling us is that I see disk number 9 and I'm going to wait for you to put in drives 10 through 15. Uh, well, actually 9 through 15 before I create another configure storage job. So we'll click OK on that. And as we go along, we'll see some additional disk, some additional pop-ups here as we put in more disk. As we said, we had two virtual disks created on top of the first RAID 5. And what you'll see here is once we uh, finish popping in these additional disks, we'll end up with two more virtual disks. Look under job monitor here. We've popped in the 15th disk at this point, so we can see that another configure storage job has been kicked off. And there we go. Job's complete. We now have two more virtual disks to use as backup devices. So that's all there is to setting up a PowerVault DL2000. In fact, in this demonstration, we, after getting it racked, we, we set it up with the initial eight drives, and we even popped in seven more drives. And we can see that that's all been configured for us. So hopefully you're seeing the value that um, with this appliance, you can eliminate several hours of setup time 
and get this deployments up and running in, in minutes instead of hours, and in some cases days. So let's take a quick look down here. And you'll see here's the other two virtual disks. Total of four. And it's important to note that when you create backup jobs, you have the option to either point to a specific virtual disk, or if you go with the default behavior, uh, backup exec will, will span your backup jobs across all virtual disks. So that's the end of our demonstration. And have a great day.